Good morning. Happy Sunday. Let's worship the Lord together. Let's lift up a praise to him. Amen.
morning and welcome to Harvest Time Church. I'm Pastor Tammy and I'm excited to be with you this morning. Pastor Dennis and Cindy Reynolds are on vacation right now taking a much needed break from everything they've been through and we've all been lifting them up in prayer but we are so excited that they're getting this time to just refresh, be together, be with their family and just spend time with God. So this morning, I get to share with you, we've had two other special speakers, and now I'm your grand finale. Lucky you. So this morning, I would like to talk to you about the God that makes the impossible possible. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. 
We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives right now, Father God. We give you complete control over this morning. We love you so much. We invite you in, Holy Spirit. I pray you just take the messenger away, Lord, and just let your message come through, Father God. We just thank you for what we're going to learn today. We thank you that you love us so much that you um, have prepared this in my heart for, for everyone who's going to be watching today. We just love you and we give you all the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This morning I want to talk to you about divine appointment. I believe in divine appointments. I believe they happen when we listen to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and allow ourselves to be the instruments of God. God often wants to use us to minister to others by showing God's love for them through us. Today we're going to talk about three characters in the Bible. All three had a two-way conversation with God. They talked to God, they prayed, they cried out to God, and they heard from God. He spoke to them. There are many more examples of people in the Bible who heard from God and cried out to God. However, this morning, I want to just focus on three men we are all very familiar with. Moses, Samuel, and Noah. As a children's pastor, or if you attended Sunday school as a child, you definitely knew these important men in the Bible. We're going to start with Moses. We're going to go to Exodus 3, 1 through 15. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire blazing out of the middle of a bush. He looked. The bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't this bush burn up? God saw that he had stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush. Moses, Moses, he said. Yes, I'm right here. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You're standing on holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. God said, I've taken a good long look at the afflictions of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. I know about their pain, and now I have come down to help them, pry them loose from the grip of Egypt, get them out of that country, and bring them to a good land with wide open spaces and land lush with milk and honey, the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Prezites, the Havites, and the Jebusites. The Israelites cry for help has the Israelites cry for help has come to me and I've seen for myself how cruelly they're being treated by the Egyptians. It's time for you to go back. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the people of Israel out of Egypt. Moses answered God, but why me? What makes you think that I could ever go to Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? I'll be with you, God said, and this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. When you have brought my people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here at this very mountain. Then Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the people of Israel and I tell them, the God of your fathers sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What do I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. Tell the people of Israel, I am sent you. God continued with Moses. This is what you're, what you're to say to the Israelites. 
God, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sent me to you. This has always been my name, and this is how I will always be known. Divine appointment. That was divine appointment. Moses was walking along. He saw a burning, bru- a burning bush. The, the bush was on fire and not burning the bush up. It was a divine appointment from God. So Moses, God spoke to Moses through that burning bush. God gave Moses what seemed like impossible instructions. He used Moses to rescue God's people from Pharaoh. And you know what Moses did? He obeyed God. And guess what God did? He showed up. God is so good. That's a divine appointment. Let's check out Samuel. In 1 Samuel 3, the Lord calls to Samuel. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called to Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran into Eli and he said, here I am. You called me? But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back to bed and lie down. So he went back and he laid down. Again, the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up, and he went into Eli, and he said, Here I am. You called me? My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back to bed and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Remember that part. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel, And Samuel got up, and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at the just like the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from the beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel laid down until morning. Could you imagine? And then he opened the door of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked. Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. Ooh, that was a rough one. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. And then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. Verse 21 says, The Lord continued to appear in Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel 
through his word, divine appointment. Here's a little boy who'd been serving God. Remember, Samuel was a, he was a miracle baby anyway. His mommy Hannah couldn't have babies and she prayed and she cried at the altar and they got, she promised God that if God just gave her a baby, she would dedicate the baby back. That's Samuel. She dedicated that baby back. He grew up under Eli. He was mentored by Eli, and now God's called him to go tell him that he was going to destroy him. That's divine appointment. That's scary. God calls out to little Samuel, then gives him a really hard job, and you know what Samuel did? He obeyed God. Then the Bible said that God continued to reveal himself through his word because Samuel was faithful and he did what God called him to do and he met the mark in that divine appointment God continued to reveal himself to Samuel to me that's amazing now we come to Noah I love Noah Noah is amazing when I think about the message of Noah I just think Whoa, that must have been super hard. I can't imagine building an ark out of just what was around and not even knowing what an ark was or what God was calling him to do. This was a divine appointment. Let's check it out in Genesis 6, 8 through 22. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Han, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has breath of life in it Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Wow, divine appointment. To me, that's just amazing. I, 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 when I think about this scripture, all three of them, the, the jobs that God gave them to do were mind-boggling. Like, how am I, can I do these jobs? It's amazing to me how God works. And often what we say is, if God will just give me that next step, uh, if I just knew what was coming ahead, then I will be not nervous. I will be okay. I will do it. You know, but the truth is, if you look at the word of God, you see that God does do that. He does give instruction. But are you listening? So my first point I want to talk to you about this morning is the way to 
hear the words of God, to know how to listen for God's voice and obey his voice and receive his blessings. So number one is listen. Psalms 25, four through five says, show me how you work, God. School me in your ways. Take me by the hand. Lead me down the path of truth. You are my savior, aren't you? Noah, Moses, Samuel, what they all had in common. First of all, they listened to the voice of God. How do you hear him? How do I get to hear him? How do we know the voice of God? We need to spend quiet time in God's presence. When my kids were little, the only way that I could get quiet time with God was in the shower. So many times I would be in the shower and I'd be praying and crying out to God and I would hear God talk to me. He would tell me things like, I'm going to save your family. I'm going to use you to do that. And I'd be like, what? You're not going to use me. Uh, how are you going to use me? Uh, think of the times like, how do you know? How do you recognize him? The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. So if you are a child of God, when God speaks to you, you'll know that it's him. You have to read his word. And you have to pay attention for the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So I have a friend I went to visit a few weeks ago when I was on vacation. And uh, he was asking me a lot of questions. I think he was kind of trying to trick me or trip me up a little bit. But one of the questions he asked me is, uh, so uh, you've read your Bible? And I said, yeah, I've read my Bible lots of times. And he paused and he said, oh, so you didn't get it the first time? And I was like, huh? Like it, for a few minutes, I, I didn't know how to respond to him. And then as I thought about it more, I thought, and I was able to come back to him and say to him, you know, I thought about that question you asked me about why did I have to read my Bible and over and over again? And I said, the reason why I have to read my Bible over and over again is because I'm not just to read the Bible like you would read any kind of book. I'm to study the word of God. I'm to keep reading it because every time I read the word of God, God reveals something new to me. Something will look different to me, like looking at Noah here and and seeing what God, I heard the story, I sang the song, I, I know about Noah, I know about the rainbow, I know all that stuff. But sometimes we miss the little details that God has for us. And by reading the Bible and studying the Bible and doing Bible studies and spending time with other Christians and learning together, the Holy Spirit reveals new things to us. And maybe in the moment you just might need that word from God, an encouragement, or maybe he's speaking to you with a divine appointment. And that's how we're going to listen. We're going to go and we're going to pray. So I was able to share that with him. And I think that he got it. We'll see. So I'm not just to read the Bible, I'm to study it, to become familiar with what God wants me to know. What I love about the Bible is he gave this to us. It's precious, it's important, it's God-breathed, and it's from our creator. Like he loved us so much that he created this Bible, this word that even he was revealing through all time, he gave that to us so that we can know him more, so we could understand him. And I think that he also has us learn and read our Bible so that we could see what others have done, so we could learn from them and maybe not make the same mistakes, but also see that we are okay. We're, we're all human and we all make mistakes. I read this the other day in my Bible, in my uh, home study, it said, hearing God's voice requires a listening heart. How many times do we talk to people and have a conversation with people, but we don't really stop and listen to them? So my husband and I might be talking, and as he's talking to me, I'm finishing his sentences, and he's not getting to finish what he wants to say. I just jump right in there. Do you ever do that? I know we all do that, but I wonder if there's times when we do that with God too. We need to just sit, pray to God, worship God, and then just wait on God and listen for his voice. Number two, we're going to obey. The ark, going and talking to Eli, 
All those things, Moses having to go to the Pharaoh, they had to be obedient, they had to do. So if God has laid something on your heart and he's telling you to do something, sometimes it seems scary, but God gave Noah specific instructions, details on what was going to happen. Moses led people, he stood up to Pharaoh, and then Samuel told Eli what God had instructed him to tell him. Even though it was scary, they still did it. They were obedient. Number three, receive. What happened because they did what they are supposed to do? If, you, if God's calling you to do something or God's put something on your heart or there's a divine appointment uh, God is leading you to, when you step out and you do the right thing, then you receive blessings. You might not know what those blessings are in the moment, but later on they'll be re revealed to you. So obviously for Noah, his whole family was saved, right? The people were rescued because of Moses. If Moses would have never went, well, maybe God would have used somebody else, but he didn't have to because Moses obeyed him. God did miracles before their eyes. Imagine Moses. He goes before the Pharaoh and throws down the staff and it turns into a snake. You know, the water turned to blood. All the things, God never failed him. The whole time God was right beside him and he's right beside you and me as well. What they all have in common, they listen to God. Have you taken time to stop and listen? They obeyed, even when they were afraid. They witnessed the power and the mercy of God. So I've been at Harvest Time Church for 17 years. And when I came here, I was a baby Christian. I had been saved when I was eight years old, but I had never faithfully attended a church or had time to grow in my ministry or know what my ministry was or, or anything like that. But when I came to Harvest Time Church, the Holy Spirit just started working on me. He, I wanted to read everything. I wanted to go to every class. I, I went to every service. I went to first, second, seven, first service, second service, and night service. And um, I was just hungry for God. And... Um, in 2011, I became the director at Bright Star. I've worked here for 17 years, but I was a teacher. And I, can't, I was praying because it was a little scary. At that time, Bright Star was not doing well, and it easily could have been closed. And the director we had at the time, Miss Ricky, had resigned. And now her mantle was passed down to me. And I remember being afraid. I remember um, thinking, wow, like, how is this, how am I going to be the director? And there's no children. We, I think we had like nine children and a very low amount of money. And I remember I was praying and I, I fell asleep on my bed as I was praying and I saw it was like I was all wasn't all the way sleeping you know how you're like in between and I saw in the middle of the room an ark like Noah's ark just floating in the middle of the room and I was looking at it and I had no idea why I was seeing this to be honest I was like wow this is so amazing and I woke up and I remember talking to God and I was, what was that about? And I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, even Noah doubted. So then I started thinking, Noah doubted? What are you talking about? Noah doubted. And I started thinking about, God started revealing to me how Noah is a great man in the Bible. That we hear great men in the Bible who have done great things. But Noah was just a man. And he was just a human being like me. And when he did what God said, you have to realize that when Noah went into the ark and the door was closed, it hadn't rained yet. And actually Noah didn't even, has never seen rain before in his life. So he didn't know what rain was. So him and his family had to sit there and had to wait until the rain came. 
So imagine Noah is just like you and me, and he built this ark, he loaded up his family, he loaded up the animals, and then he had to wait. Just like us. Lots of times God gives us a vision, or he gives us a dream, or he gives us a ministry or a calling, and sometimes, like Noah, we just have to wait. And this encouraged me that God would let me know that even Noah doubted. I want you to know that God wants you to listen. Listen to God. Listen to God because he has a mission for you, a ministry and a calling for all of his children. I want to encourage you this morning to spend time in God's presence. Maybe God has already given you instructions or a vision or a divine appointment, but you thought maybe that was just the pizza. That couldn't be me. That, uh, no, I can't do that. There's no way I could ever do that. When I first came to this church, I couldn't even talk in front of people. I literally took a speech class at LMC, and I had to tell the people about myself. I had to make a little bag and put things in that represented myself. And I was hitting myself the whole time, and I was shaking, and my voice was quivering, and I was so afraid. But you know what? God puts calls on your life. He puts you into ministry. He, he equips you. You might not feel like you're equipped to do it, but guess what? He is the great equipper. He is the one. Moses, Noah, little Samuel. Like, who was Samuel to go and tell Eli, the priest who had lifted, like, mentored him into where he was? They doubted too, I'm sure. Listen obey and receive maybe that prayer that you've been asking for has been stopped by you because you doubted or you thought you were not qualified listen god has something for you we are all called we are all ministers and we all have an assignment ask god listen one of, one of the great things I could tell you that I learned when I was going to church was that there was a pastor who was preaching one day, and he said, as he was going to seminary school, they would start praying at seminary. And then this young man asked him, how come every time I start praying, you just start writing down? And the pastor told him, because when I hear from God, I don't want to forget what he says. So I have to write it down. So I encourage you, that was great advice, that when you spend time with God, if God gives you a word or God gives you a sermon or God gives you a vision or a ministry or an idea, you'll know it's from God because the enemy's not going to give you anything that's going to hurt anybody or make them feel bad or anything negative. God's going to give you good. And God wants to use you. So please listen to him, obey him, and then you will receive the blessings of God and you will be blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are such a good, good Father. Father God, I just pray today, Lord, that everyone that hears this message, Father God, will have a desire to draw closer to you, Father God. Through everything that's happening right now, through the pandemic and everything from school not opening. You see all the things your people are going through, Father God, all the struggles, not being able to attend church like we normally would, Father God. I just pray, Holy Spirit, you will pour out your Holy Spirit upon each household, Father God, that there will be a revival within each home, Father God, that the people will draw close to you, Father God, and that as the time comes and everything opens up, Lord, you will anoint us to be divine appointments. Lord, if there's somebody out there right now, Father God, that you want us to, to reach out to or needs a, a, a positive um, word from one of us, Father God, I pray you speak to us and let us know. Help us. Give us boldness, Father God. We love you. We just thank you for everything you're doing. We thank you for the healings that are happening, Father God. And we just pray that... You continue to use us. Continue to reveal yourself to us. We love you so much. In Jesus' precious name, amen.